Let me quickly give you seven priorities of God for you as a child of God before we go into the message. That's just a takeaway point. Amen? Before you do anything, these are priorities of God for you. One, God wants you to become spiritual before becoming wealthy. Amen. Number two, God wants you to become powerful, not popular. Number three, God wants to become faithful, dependable. Number four, God wants to become fruitful, productive. Number five, God wants to be prayerful. Number six, God wants to be godly. And number seven, God wants to be generous. Did you get it? Amen. If you didn't get it, you have to get it. Tape. Praise God. Turn your Bibles up to the book of Romans chapter 8. Amen. <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> what happens when you pray in tongues? Part 5. Amen. Somebody say, well, why are we on this subject? I don't know, but God said this year three things are going to be raging on the earth. The deep things of God, the deep things of man, and the deep things of Satan. Amen? And it is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we access the deep things of God and the deep things of man. And confront the deep things of Satan. So we've been looking at this subject and um, I'm trusting that I will get through this particular section so we can go into other things. When the Holy Ghost comes into our life, He comes with a complete ministry and a package to bring to help us to come into the full manifestation of the plans and purposes of God for our lives. It is not possible for a man to enter into the full expression of the plans of God for his life without the Holy Spirit. That was why the Old Testament God said He found fault with the Holy Spirit as good a covenant as it was. He didn't fulfill the total heart desire of God. So God brought a new covenant into existence and one of the things that our covenant did is to bring us into a condition that the Holy Ghost can come into our lives and what has always been in the heart of God for mankind can now start manifesting. Amen. But the Holy Ghost not come into our lives so that we can lock him up somewhere. He came into our lives to enter into a partnership an engagement with us. He's not going to do what he came to do on his own and you cannot do it without him. So must come into an intelligent partnership and walk with the Holy Spirit individually and corporately. Amen. God is not just looking for Christians that know how to walk with God. He's looking for churches that know how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because no matter how strong one of us is, all of us will be stronger than one of us. Amen. How many of you believe that? No matter how strong one of us is, all of us will be stronger than one of us. No matter how wise one of us is, all of us will be wiser than one of us. Amen. When Jesus came, he carried anointing without measure. John 3, 34. And anointing without measure is resting only on two other entities on the earth now. Anointing without measure is resting on the word of God. And then on the corporate body of Christ. Amen. So the more we can function with the Holy Spirit, the greater the anointing that we can have available. To accomplish the purposes of God. Amen. It is important that you understand that the purposes of God has an individual dimension and a corporate dimension. And your own purpose under God will come to a place that you need the corporate purpose of God for the part of the body of Christ that he attached you to for it to manifest. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's why sometimes when you find people that become um, selfish and looking to themselves alone they miss out on all that god wants them to do and become do you understand that no matter how you are as a nigerian the nigerian environment is going to affect your total expression the better nigeria is the easier it is for each nigerian to fully express their um, reason for being a nigerian amen so it's very vital that we understand that and then we look at the book of romans chapter um eight okay we've been looking at um what happens when we pray in the spirit today i'm trusting that i'll be able to get you as many points as i can before time is up and then i'm not get tied up with um, one particular point amen praise god so let's start with this one when you begin to pray in tongues you begin to discharge divine burdens it helps you to discharge divine 
burdens. What it means simply is that you come to a place that you can team up with deity to accomplish his will on the earth. The bathing of his counsel, his purposes, his operations. That ability to speak in tongues brings you into that partnership. When you hear the burden of Lord, the burden of Lord, people wonder and say, what it is? Let me give you a simple example. Yesterday or so, or two days ago, a young brother in the church called mommy and said, he doesn't know what's been happening to him. He's just been feeling sad. He's okay. He's not living in sin. He has just been feeling sad and um, whatever. And the mommy was giving him counsel or something like that. So, and then I, I asked, I said, what, what was that about? And she told me, I said, call him back. That is the Holy Spirit introducing a burden to his heart. He is not interpreting it correctly. Most likely the devil is coming after somebody close to him and God is signifying that, that he needs to get into prayer. So I told him, go and pray for about one hour, two hours. And when you finish praying, call. And then he called me after I finished praying. I've done that. I'm going for all night now and all that. He didn't understand the burden of the Lord. Is Sometimes you find yourself that um, you just... You are not sorrowful in the sense of um, something is making you sad. But God is looking for the most sensitive person around to introduce his body, what he's feeling about the particular situation, what he knows about the particular situation to that person so that he can team up with that person to counter what the devil is bringing and establish what his own counsel is all about. Amen. I want you to look at some scriptures now get the explanation in your mind so that brother we could help him to get into that um understanding it's not a matter of crying you know feel like crying sometimes you feel like weeping okay and god wants you to release that i was supposed to say, why, why am i crying i don't know you don't have to know but when you understand that that's how god the holy spirit is going to bring you into an awareness god wants something to be done here god wants something to be done there and you do that, the will of God is accomplished. Sometimes if we see fit to tell you what you prayed about, some other times he won't tell you, but maybe later, later somebody will share a testimony with you that you can date to that experience that you were having. Sometimes you find the Bible, the Bible says, weep over so and so city. For a prophet, how can you, you can't cook up tears. Are you following what I'm saying? Weep over Nineveh. How did he begin to weep? God introduced that thing to him and he began to weep uncontrollably. That was what God wants to happen in that place. Amen. So let's look at some few scriptures to explain this. So when you, whenever you see such a thing coming up, you can begin to team up with the Holy Spirit to get what he has on his mind done. Amen. Look at the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1. This is how the prophet brought out... Um, Abaku chapter 1 verse 1, the burden which Abaku the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. That's a prophet that is seeing something in the spirit, is a burden that God is placing upon his spirit, and then crying, weeping, and wondering what's going to happen. I know many times in the Old Testament they couldn't accomplish the fullness of God's purpose because they didn't have access to the Holy Spirit. To help them to take hold of this burden and fully discharge it. You can only do so much and no further with the feelings of a man and with the emotions of a man without the Holy Ghost coming in with you. Are you following what I'm saying? Huh? Praise God. Nahum chapter 1. He said the burden of Nineveh. Can God find somebody that is sensitive here that God can put the burden of Nigeria on his heart? Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 talks about some people that the burden of the reproach of a place became a burden upon their spirit. Okay. Ezekiel. Now let's look at another passage. I hope I'll be able to find that. Zephaniah chapter 3 is a better passage. And then Isaiah chapter 62. We'll come back to that. Zephaniah. Zephaniah is somewhere in the Old Testament. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 3. Look at verse um, 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. This is not morose people. 
This is not moodiness. This is a supernatural burden placed upon the spirit of a man. I hope you are following what I'm saying. And you see, I, I want you to take note of this thing. When God is moving people into the full counsel of God for their lives, there are some offices in the Bible, especially the office of the apostle and the office of a prophet, that are high offices of the kingdom. They are attractive offices because of the power and the glory and the allocation of grace that is attached to those offices. So when we see men that are functioning in those offices, we get attracted and many people that are immature always want to jump to that office. But when you see genuine prophets of God, most of them actually have another office that they function in constantly. Do you understand? It's only in Nigeria that you see prophets that are seeing visions every second. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God begins to move people from most of the time intercessory ministries to pray. Put a burden. If God can trust you in the night that he place a burden upon you for your family and you begin to ex ex discharge that burden, you don't go to sleep. You just feel that heaviness upon your heart. I don't know what it is. And you begin to pray. All right? And pray, pray, pray until that burden is discharged. The, the, I, I, I see that burden as a measure of work that has to be done in the spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? Because of the situation on ground, some burdens can last a year. If you have stood in the office of intercession before, or you have interacted with real intercessors, some, some of them, you, you find, if you, you wonder whether you can relate with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because is is weaving in and out of human fellowship and divine body you're in the midst of friends now and the body just come upon you I just, I just have a sense i must go to pray now how many of you have had a friend like that or you have felt like that you know huh i know what i'm talking about i operate occasionally like that but regularly i'm married to a woman that operates like that do you understand what i'm saying you so you just have to understand that um, marrying somebody carrying a calling is a price I hope you are following what I'm saying. Praise God. Amen. Can you imagine you, man, some of you that say, well, praise God, I want to marry a prophetess. I want to do this and all that. What if you want to meet with your wife in the night and there's a burden of the Lord on her? What's going to happen? I look at all of them are looking at me as if they are holier than me. <laughs> you know what man of God told us a story and said he was um, on the bed one night, the wife is beside him. And then an angel came and an angel was discussing with him and giving him instruction. And the wife turned and said, my dear, where are now? Now, which one does he respond to? My dear or the angel? Praise God. <laughs> it's not easy to, to, to walk on the road of the spirit. You understand? So you begin to weave in and out like that. And many people just jump. You see, if you can carry the burden of the Lord successfully, faithfully, it will do something to your spirit that you will carry the word of the Lord with responsibility. When people have not carried the burden of the Lord, you see them with trivial spirits carrying the word of the Lord. Even if you have a gift of prophecy, the way somebody releases it shows that he's not very constant and present in the presence of God, in the presence of God. Are you following what I'm saying? So some burdens can last two hours. Some burdens can last an hour. As a pastor, one of the areas that I see the burden of the Lord a lot is, you know, moving on my spirit when people are maybe pastoring people have a burden for people who travel yesterday when we finished our pastor's meeting and um they were all traveling okay i just picked the body in this place something wrong was going to happen on one of the roads okay so i called them i said okay everybody are you going and all that one of them didn't travel <clears throat> said it's going to go this morning okay and um so I said, okay, they've gone and prayed for them and all that. So I called some of the brothers in the Bible school. I said, take about one hour and pray for all the people that are traveling. So I kept calling them and calling them and all that. And at the point, I felt like calling the people that are going to Lagos. So I called them. They said they were at Shagam. And um, I said, okay, any problem? He said, suddenly they called back and said they failed. They saw vehicles turning back. And I said, you find anything wrong? And all that they say, well, they see people. I say, okay, find out, but why don't you turn into Shagamu and sleep over and find out what, what is going on? Okay, so turned into Shagamu, we found a place for them to sleep, and then they got there. And then they called me back. I said, they, they could see vehicles on the road, they turned, they don't know what's going on. I said, well, most likely there's a robbery going on. We'll find out. 
And then they found some vehicle that they, they were turning back and they said some policemen told, told them that there was a robbery going on actually there. Are you following what I'm saying? So that body, when they were starting off, was God picking what was going to happen? Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Sometimes we will pray the body off and then things will be clear. And sometimes the burden is to lead you into an action. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Okay. So the prayers that was going on was what sensitized them to take note that vehicles were turning back. By the time they were trying to stop them, no vehicle was going to stop for them, but they had seen them turn back and they turned, they stopped, and they could turn back into that town. So they slept over, they went this morning. Are you following what I'm saying? And sometimes as God's people, we have not interpreted that correctly. Some people have had that bond, like that brother that was feeling sad without knowing why. She's okay. He said he's not, he's not living in sin, just feeling sad. Okay, you can't just be feeling sad. It's, you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between the spirit of heaviness that devil is bringing upon you, moodiness, and this burden of the Lord that I'm talking about. I hope you're following what I'm saying. That was how the prophets knew that a word was coming, and sometimes it's a heavy word. When they begin to deliver the word, they are crying and crying and crying and all that, and then they finish discharging the burden. Sometimes the prophecy is like a vision. I'm seeing this now, and um, all that. Amen. And you must recognize your responsibility to God. That when the Holy Ghost signal, you are in a partnership with me. He's the senior partner. You are the junior partner. And you don't determine how we are going to go. He determines how we are going to go. You don't tell him when to talk to you or when to call you. He determines when he wants to call you. You don't know what is going on around. The way we look at life is we look in front. We look sideways. We look around us. He looks from above. He sees everything together at the same time. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Okay? So, and sometimes you can just have a body. You don't even know what it's all about. Just pray. Holy Spirit, I'm just yielding myself to you now. I'm beginning to pray. I'm beginning to pray. Do you get what I'm saying? If, don't, and don't expect that everybody will be east of soon. Do you understand? Some bodies can last you a year. Like I said, you just keep on. Every time you pick up that body, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you know, things like that. Sometimes I've woken up in the middle of the night and with a body on my heart, and then I tap on me and say, I just feel we should pray now. Let's begin to pray. And then, of course, when you have trained yourself over the years, there's no question of arguing and say, ah, look, I want to sleep and things like that and all that. Husbands and wife, Christian husband, I must train themselves to respond to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the chairman of your home. And he has a right to call any one of you that is most sensitive at that time. And say, let's begin to pray. What about? I don't know. I told the story of one of a man of God that shared his testimony. Ken Hagen shared his testimony many years ago that um, he had, a, I think, a friend of his. They had a, a Christian member that was a worker at a particular construction site. And then the wife of this man of God, pastor's wife, woke up now and had a burden and said, ah, I just have a burden, let's pray. And they began to pray. They prayed, prayed in the night, prayed around 4 a.m. The burden had not been discharged. And of course, the husband, you know, is practical, okay, and say, what are we going to do? We've got some other things to do, but the wife that is intercessor knowing that burden had not been discharged. So, say, okay, let's pray. Let's agree together. Whoever this is concerning, wherever they are, now God will give them a dream. And they prayed together. And true and true, that brother had a funny dream that he got to the construction site that morning and um, the foreman called him that Another worker who was supposed to climb something on top did not come and that issue climbed it. Okay. So he climbed it in that dream and then while he was climbing it, some rope caught and there was a very sharp object that just swung and cut off his head. And then he woke up and then, of course the pastor and his wife, they agreed like that. They went on to do other things. And now, that brother got to his working place. The man that he saw in the dream didn't come, did not come. And the foreman called him like he saw in the dream and said, Mr. So-and-so, this man is not around. You climbed, he said, no. I had a dream this morning. That man didn't come and you called me in the dream and I climbed this and that thing caught and that thing cut off my head. I'm not calling me. And a man was there that said, no, I don't believe in that kind of superstition. And he climbed the thing, that rope cut and that thing cut off his head. Are you following what I'm saying? Now that's something that happened. Okay? So you can have a situation like that, that a burden just comes up in your spirit like that. And you begin to pray. Many times, husbands must be careful that our practical 
nature does not interrupt the spiritual body that the Holy Spirit is placing. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, there are two things I want you to get now. The, the extent of the body that determines the work that has to be done in the spirit. So if some evil happened eventually, we should acknowledge that we didn't do the work that we needed to do. I hope you follow what I'm saying. And then as you begin to be faithful in little, your sphere begins to increase. You understand? If you have not been faithful to pray over burdens that even had to do with your life, yourself, God is not going to trust you with something that concerns your family. And if you have not been faithful with issues that concern your family, there's no way he's going to trust you with your friends. And if you have not been faithful with that circle, he's not going to trust you with the nation. Are you following what I'm saying? I've learned this over time in my life and my work as a pastor that whenever I feel it doesn't matter how odd it looks, where it comes, it concerns somebody or something that God wants us to deal with. So we're going to pray. I'll pray. I'll call people to pray and things like that. Do you get what I'm saying? And then with mommy working a lot in that because of our intercessory, most people call me our prophetic ministry is extremely accurate. Okay. But most people see her more as a prophetess. They don't see her as an intercessor. So her basic ministry is intercession. That God can trust you to wake up and pray for issues that you don't even know. Are you following? Some are examples that um, sometimes I remember one time we're having a pastor's meeting at Leisha and then she just woke up and said, I had this terrible experience and um, I saw an accident on Akure Leisha Road. And then I said, okay, we're going to pray. And we prayed. Well, I'm sure we didn't pray too long because the pastors, everybody was tired. We've been praying been on all night for some time. And then so prayed and then rounded off and said, well, um, God, God himself knows we are tried. The following day, I think, was it the following day? following day, one of the popular Nigerian Christian musicians was traveling on that road. And the boss carrying the musician had an accident on that road. There were about one or two fatalities, and then some people were injured. Well, I felt that prayer limited the number of people that died because what she saw in the dream was more than that. But we could have prevented the entire thing from happening. So what happened is this, that God, the Bible says, God will not allow any evil to happen without discussing with his servants, the prophet. So God is looking for somebody. If some evil is going to happen in Oshun State, for example, he's going to look for people that have that faithfulness with heaven in obedience in the past. And that scope of responsibility and put that burden on their heart. Are you following? I'm saying? And that burden is going to last enough for them to pray it from happening. Sometimes you will notice that this is actually what the Lord gave me. You will notice the, the situation that will have led to that problem. Are you following what I'm saying? And you must know the difference between what an agent of the devil sees that the devil wants to happen and what an intercessor sees that God wants to prevent. Can you get what I'm saying? Two weeks after that experience, that man of God literally collapsed in the pulpit. We had news. He was preaching on a Sunday and fainted. And when the news came, I, I fell on my face. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. But that was not the end of the story. Shortly after that, the ministry of that man went into serious crisis. Severe crisis that was so terrible. Because God knows what the devil is planning. Either for somebody or for a group of people. And he's going to find somebody faithful. Are you following what I'm saying? And the only means that we have to take a hold of some spiritual information. And do spiritual work on it. So as to become practical manifestation to stop evil. is speaking in tongues. Do you understand that? Huh? You're not going, it's not, it's not, sometimes you find people, people receive something and then call a news conference. When you, a genuine prophet don't call news conference. Because he's interested in stopping evil. Not interested in drawing attention to himself that I can see. I hope you follow what I'm saying. There are two kinds of revelations that God will give you and you must take note of that so you can be aware of that. God will give revelations that you're going to speak about, teach, and revelations to pray about. And most of the time, revelations to pray about, they are heavier than revelations to teach and preach about. Do you understand? There are things that God will show, show me 
or show people that you have to pray and keep quiet about it and deal with it. Even talking about it can give the game away to the devil. Are you following what I'm saying? And I believe that if you're going to walk in the ministry of intercession and team up with the Holy Spirit to accomplish his purposes, one of the areas that you're going to gain control over is loose-mouthedness. You can't be a loose-mouthed person and walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Some people, their mouth is too flabby, just top, pa, 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 pa. Hey, I saw something, I saw something, and things like that. God wants to draw attention to himself, and that's not correct. Do you get what I'm saying? And God must find you faithful because... It, 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 the only person that benefits if any evil happens to human beings or to Christians is the devil. Do you understand? And many times you find friends among Christians because there's no other group of people like Christians that believe evil and want evil to happen to another Christian. It's bad, isn't it? What are you going to gain if something bad happens to somebody? Are you following? I'm saying I remember another occasion she had this encounter with the Lord and them. The Lord showed her and said, and she saw a vision of a man of God. And that man of God does not flow well with me. Are you following what I'm saying? And then she saw, I said, I saw this man was involved in an accident. It was a fatal accident. I said, no, in Jesus' name, it won't happen. Now, I learned my lesson from the previous one. Okay? So we woke up around 1.30 a.m., prayed around 3.30 a.m. And prayed. And I knew the body was discharged. We felt, dealt with it. And I forgot about it. Some weeks after that, we went for a conference in another state and a friend came up to me and said, did you hear what happened to someone? So I said, no. I was talking about that man of God. I said he was traveling to Lagos and the car was assaulted and he came out on hot. So I said, I praise God. And then I walked up to the man of God. I greeted him. I said, ah, what happened? Praise God. The Lord is a good God. Amen. I never told him that we prayed. Are you following what I'm saying? But that's not the purpose of the prayer. God is looking for somebody faithful. Do you understand what I'm saying? That he can trust with the secrets of heaven. Okay? And you're going to take it up and start with yourself. A burden comes upon you. You want to travel tomorrow and you begin to pray. You begin to pray. Amen? And you ask the Holy Spirit, how am I going to get through this? Don't, 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 don't stop it by yourself because your flesh doesn't want you to get involved in the body of the Lord. Do you get what I'm saying? It can happen in your business. It can happen with a relationship. It can happen anywhere. Amen? One of our ministry um, sons had an experience. A week, the burden of law was just upon his spirit. But he was just led to just be worshipping the Lord and worship the Lord every day for seven days. And then they were traveling from Akure to Lagos and got to a particular place around the to Jeshan and early in the morning and armed robbers had laid the road. Wounding people, they saw vehicles in the ditch and all. when they got to their vehicle, they say, pack. And all of you, close your eyes and sleep. That's all they told them. They, they, were, they were dealing with every vehicle, they came around and said, don't open your eyes. And everything. They didn't touch anyone in that vehicle. But now you hear that testimony. Because many times, when we hear testimonies, people don't tell us the details of the testimony. Behind that testimony was seven days of discharging the burden of the Lord in supernatural worship. I hope you follow what I'm saying. It concerned them. And let me say this to you. If you are unfaithful in dealing with issues that concern you, you'll be unfaithful in dealing with issues that concern others too. If, it's, if you're unfaithful in little, you'll be unfaithful in much. If you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. So that's one of the things that speaking in tongues does for us. Amen? That we can team up with the Holy Spirit to bath his purposes introduces those burdens into our hearts. Look at Luke chapter 22. This one, I will have put it under that, but I want to separate it because it's slightly different. Look, so you have put this number next as praying preemptive prayers. Helps us to pray preemptive prayers. Luke 22. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, of course, if I was Peter, I would have told him, Lord, how am I going to know? He was arguing with him. 
And of course, you know the incident that the Lord prayed about was when the Lord was arrested and them. Um, all those, the little girl and people began to ask Peter and say, you are one of them. He denied and said this and things like that. Okay? Satan had gone ahead in the spirit looking for permission to sift them like wheat. But the Lord picked it and prayed ahead. And every father, every mother, every leader, every pastor must enter into this kind of prayer. And the only way you are going to do that is praying in tongues because you, can't, you, you don't know tomorrow with your head. Only the Holy Spirit knows tomorrow. Do you get that? Praise God. So when you want to pray about your tomorrow, pray in tongues a lot. You can start by praying, Father, I'm, I'm going to pray about this week. I'm going to pray about this month. I'm going to pray about this year. Sometimes you fast and then you pray in the spirit. Don't listen to anybody that tells you that um, you, you shouldn't pray in the spirit. The Bible is very clear that no natural prayer can be as high as praying in the spirit except you are interpreting a prayer in tongues. Got an answer. An answer.